This time of year, it seems like we hear a lot about giving to others, but a News 4 I-Team investigation is raising questions about one charity aimed at helping children have a better Christmas. Yeah, it's run by a local sheriff's office, and Scott McFarland and the I-Team go undercover to see who's really benefiting. Decked out for the holidays, Main Street at Christmas, a time of gift buying and charity. But as you're about to see, this is not your traditional charity story. Sir, I'm going to defer that question to the sheriff. It's my final answer. You can't answer it. We're done. Because the News 4 I team found some pretty untraditional things happening here. It just doesn't seem right to you. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't. Becky Frazier Grant has lived in Culpeper County, Virginia her whole life and is familiar with the Culpeper County Sheriff's Office Charitable Fund run by Sheriff Scott Jenkins. Whatever he does, it's okay. It doesn't matter because he is the sheriff. In order to explain what she means, we have to back up to a prior holiday. I'm Sheriff Scott Jenkins. Halloween, a season of haunted houses and fall festivals, including Deadwood Trail. For the last couple of years, the sheriff's office has run this haunted attraction just a few miles out of town. They take uh, about 150 underprivileged kids for uh, Christmas shopping. Where about 500 guests pay $10 a ticket to get scared and to raise money for the sheriff's charity, a formally registered 501c3 charity with the IRS, organized to buy Christmas gifts for kids who need them. Santa gives them their bag and they have Christmas. But when the I-Team visited in October, we found more than just goodwill being raised. Weeks before Election Day, it looked more like a campaign event. With the sheriff in the middle of a battle for a third term, we saw campaign signs posted on his behalf. An electronic screen with one above the entrance. And at the ticket booth, what appeared to be campaign literature and volunteers working the event with Jenkins clothing. The IRS has specifically said that a 501c3 educational organization cannot be involved in elections. David Williams of the Taxpayers Protection Alliance said charities registered with the feds are prohibited from this. It appears as if the sheriff is using this 501c3, this educational organization, for his own political gain. Definitely needs uh, some looking into. And it's a concern for those gathered at the town barbershop. Especially in this time, this time of the year. If it's for charity, it should be for charity. I think it's wrong. Right. Doesn't seem right to you? No. We wanted to talk to the sheriff about what we'd seen, and he initially agreed. But at the last minute, he had Captain Bernie Fagans, who also helps run the sheriff's charity, sit down with us. What about the re-elect Sheriff Jenkins signs on the property at a charitable event? Well, we had uh, more than just Sheriff Jenkins signs there. There were various other candidates' signs on the property, and uh, they were all sponsors. His opponent's sign wasn't up there. His opponent wasn't a sponsor. Is it okay to mix charity? And political? I don't think we were mixing charity and political. The IRS does not respond to questions about specific charities, but Williams, the taxpayer advocate, says IRS rules are clear. They should not be doing any election business. But as the I-Team kept digging into this Halloween event, our digging led us here to the Culpeper County Jail. In 2018, days before the Deadwood Trail opened, our cameras caught this white SUV leave the jail and head out of town to the farm where preparations for the event were underway dropping off men in white t-shirts. Deputies confirmed to the I-Team those are in fact inmates from the jail working on the property. A property that belongs to the sheriff's brother who also works for the sheriff's office. On a fundamental level, does that bother you? This reeks of nepotism. And how much is the sheriff saving by having these prisoners do this? There is a Virginia law that prohibits a sheriff from using inmates to work on a family's property. And another statute allows some work on private property for charities, but only with a court order. We asked the sheriff's office for any such orders, but did not hear back. There are inmates helping do the work in preparation for the event. Is that okay? Our inmate workforce is used throughout the county for various things. It, it's the sheriff's brother's property they're working on. Then I will defer that to the sheriff. The sheriff has assigned this interview to you, Captain Fagans. And you do represent the department and the charity that operates the event. Like I said, our inmate workforce is used throughout the throughout the community for various things from... But this isn't anywhere in the county. Sir, I'm going to defer that question to the sheriff. It's my final answer. You can't answer. Right, We're done.
The I team did formally request logs of inmates leaving and returning to the jail, but we were told those logs do not exist. Virginia State Police would be the agency to investigate complaints against the sheriff, but they would need a formal referral from the Attorney General of Virginia or the Culpeper County Prosecutor. Doreen and Leon, back to you. Do we expect one of those referrals? We're revealing much of this for the first time tonight, but again, citizens cannot report this. It actually has to be a formal referral from a prosecutor. They were, seemed to be pretty brazen about it, pretty blatant. They were trying to cover up anything. They were trying to hide it. We'll see uh, if there is fallout and more responses to come. Interesting. All Thank right. you, Scott.